Hi everyone, Janie here. Welcome back to my garden and welcome back to my greenhouse that is completely infested with aphids. Yes, you heard me right. I am standing in the greenhouse and I feel gross. I feel totally gross. So having a greenhouse and keeping it clean and keeping it pest free, it is not a hands-off job. Really, I am supposed to be coming out here at least twice a week and I feel like every day if there is a known infestation and there is a known infestation in here, I just haven't been on top of it and I haven't been coming out and checking my plants and doing the things that I need to do. Um, but if you do have a greenhouse and you wanna leave plants in here, like that's just, it's just kind of what you have to do. So the culprit of my issue are these super tunias that I have right here. These I purchased at the end of last season for a little test and the test completely failed. Uh, <laughs> if, if you guys were wondering, but what I wanted to do is since I live in zone 9B and our last frost is technically February 28th, you know, around that time, um, we always have the ability to plant annuals way ahead of almost everybody else in the country. I'm sure there's a handful of you that have an earlier last frost than I do, but it's kind of frustrating because um, a lot of people in my zone have a hard time finding annuals early enough. There's a lot of time that our gardens just sit dormant, not because we can't plant, but because we don't have access to plants because plant nurseries um, mostly are located in zones that are lower than us. So what I wanted to try this year is I wanted to try and get these super tunias at the end of the season last year, winter them over in my greenhouse or my plant room inside and see if I could plant them out uh, early, earlier than I could get my hands on super tunias otherwise. So there was a couple problems with this. One, this year has been absolutely ridiculous. It's raining today and it wasn't supposed to rain today. I am in a vest and <laughs> it's, you know, it's spring, you guys. There have been years, I remember it would be February and I would be in a t-shirt, but this year it was really cold and there was no way that I could get these guys out any any sooner than this, right? Um, and so, you know, there's a, I already have access to super tunias now at this point. So it's just a matter of this year was just too cold. It really didn't matter. And then I had these plants inside in my plant room slash office. They were so happy in there. They were so happy. And so were the aphids. And there must have been like one or two aphids on one of the plants and it just exploded. It absolutely exploded. And I was on top of it when it was inside because that's my office and I don't want aphids, you know, walking around. So I was like spraying off these super tunias basically every day. That's a, that's a really good way to manage super tunias is to actually spray them off. But if you don't get all of them, they're just gonna reproduce. Aphids reproduce so quickly that you basically have to stay on top of it. So when the plants were inside with me, I was on top of it. So all winter I was on top of it. They looked absolutely beautiful. Then when I started my seed starting and I moved them out to the greenhouse, I no longer was on top of it anymore. <laughs> and I kind of just left them and I would come out and I would water and I would say, oh, I got to spray or I got to spray off the, them off with water. I, when I say spray, I mean spray with water. I did use insecticidal soap a handful of times. I just didn't feel like it was any better than just using water. So I just ended up using water, especially cause it's in my master closet is where my plant room and my office is and I didn't want anything spraying in there. Um, so I would, I would come out here, I would water them and I would say, oh, I have to spray and then I wouldn't spray. And then it's, it, the aphids kind of just took over. So long story short, all my super tunias are dying. I, I mean, I tried to save a couple of them. I have a couple of them out here right there that I rinsed off. I, I checked over every leaf and I feel like I got most of the aphids, but these guys in here, these guys are just inundated with aphids. Look at how gross. I mean, I did my master gardener's video on pests this past week. So I feel like this is kind of appropriate. It's just these poor things. I just did not take care of them well enough. So yeah, so overwintering super tunias, um, you know, it's not for the faint of heart. <laughs> and I kind of feel like you have to really, really want them early on uh, if you're gonna go through all of that. And you know, I just, I don't know. I just don't think it's worth it. I think just be patient and just wait for them to become available. Even these, these are my Supertunia Mini Vista Pink Star that I dug out of my three white pots. 
that are over there uh, to save them, to overwinter them. These even got infested with some aphids as well. So these are going in the garbage, sadly, which is fine. I got a whole season out of them. It's these that I'm really upset about. So luckily my white giant cow lilies that I have potted up, they have not been touched. The aphids are not bothering them at all. Same thing with this, I cannot remember the name of this, something cotton lavender cotton, green lavender cotton. Um, these don't look like they've been touched at all. These look totally fine. The only thing that's bugging these is I got a weed I noticed right as I started filming. Oh my gosh, that is quite the roots on the weed. Anyway, so these guys look totally fine and I'm not worried about them. All these guys are going in the garbage. And then what I'm gonna do, is I'm going to mix up a mixture of one part bleach to nine parts water. I have these rags, I have gloves, and I'm basically going to wipe everything down that's in here. So if there are any bugs, any eggs or anything like that, they it will be sanitized, it will be nice and clean, and it will be ready to go for the next round of plants that I have. So what I'm learning about in Master Gardeners is I'm learning about the IPM technique for pest control. IPM stands for Integrated Pest Management, and it is the way to go for pest control. Basically what it is, is it's a flow, like a, like a thought process of how to deal with pests and how to deal with them the least toxic way first and then work your way up to more toxicity. So basically spraying my, my super tunias with water is completely not toxic at all. <laughs> like it doesn't bother anybody except for the pests, right? It's just water. So that is a really non-toxic good way to deal with pests. And I notice it's just as good, if not better than dealing with the more toxic uh, level, which is spraying insecticidal soap, which is still not like, um, you know, uh, a really heavy, strong insecticide or, you know, or something really bad like that, a broad spectrum thing, right? Insecticidal soap is relatively benign. So basically with IPM, you want to kind of work your way up and really think about your pest problem before it gets out of control. I should have been on top of it with these guys, so I never had to take the step of using this bleach and the sanitation and all that kind of stuff. But really, one part bleach to nine parts water is not that big of a deal. It's not like I'm uh, doing like a bug fog spray or you know anything like this to try and kill everything so that is the goal that is what the master gardeners program recommends to everybody because when you overdo it when you overdo and you um excessively kill with toxic chemicals you're also affecting other things you're affecting other bugs you're affecting the plants you're affecting the environment as a whole and it might cause you more problems in the long run because you're messing up the um you know, everybody, everything's relationship to each other. I hope I'm making any sense. But anyway, so with IPM, you wanna start with the lowest, least toxic uh, thing that you can do first and work your way up. So I have been trying spraying with water, didn't really work. Now I've decided I am just going to remove the plants because they're they're past its point, you know, um, and, and deal with it that way rather than douse them with chemicals that I really don't want in my garden. I definitely don't want in my greenhouse and I, I don't even want in my plant room inside. So really the only chemical that I am using today is bleach and I feel totally confident with that and comfortable with that, especially because I am diluting it. And I will open the windows and leave the door open while I am, uh, cleaning everything so yeah this is you know this is kind of like my bug video on monday i did a master gardeners recap and we did all about bugs and i talked about the good bugs and the bad bugs it's not my favorite topic <laughs> it's not the thing that i love to do but it is part of gardening and it is something that we need to see and to see that this is totally normal if you do have a greenhouse so i will set up a camera and i will just get started cleaning everything wish me luck Okay, look at this. 
I thought I had cleaned this area, but if you look down there, there's an aphid in a spider web. I don't think it's gonna get out of the spider web, but it doesn't matter. I missed it. Gross. Ah! These guys are killing me. all done it smells disinfected in here <laughs> so I'm gonna let everything air dry I I mean I doused it with the with the bleach solution I probably messed up this vest but that's okay it was worth it so this method works not only for aphids it also works if you have any type of fungus in your greenhouse like harboring over in any way it also works if you want to clean your trays like clean your seed starting trays or clean your equipment. It's really, really good because it will, it will kill everything basically. Also work on fungus gnats. Now, fungus gnats will live in your soil, but if they're on anywhere else, then it will also help kill those fungus gnats. So it's a really good thing to do. It's a pain in the you know what, but I feel a lot better that now everything's clean. I even cleaned off some of my tools. I cleaned off my tidy tray over there. It's hanging out and I'm just gonna leave these guys right here. I think that they'll be fine. I think they'll enjoy the extra moisture from the rain we get. I do have to show you, I did stick the um, soil thermometer in the soil while I was doing that just to see if I could plant out these cow lilies. So here's my soil thermometer. So my soil is about 54, 55 degrees Fahrenheit right now. So to plant out cow lilies, and for that matter, to plant out dahlias as well, you wanna have at least 60 to 65 degrees Fahrenheit. And then tomatoes too. Tomatoes you wanna have at least 60, if not even a little bit warmer. So soil temperature, super important. You don't wanna stress your plants out by planting things out too soon. Even though we're not gonna have any more frost, it's, it's just not quite ready yet. It will be ready very soon. So I'm just gonna leave them there. If we do get a colder night, I'll just throw them back in my nice clean greenhouse yeah I feel good I feel accomplished today so it feels good to know that I didn't use any hardcore chemicals while I was dealing with these aphids I mean it obviously didn't deal with the problem but I don't even think if I sprayed with anything stronger earlier on in the season I don't even think it would have helped anyway it was just the nature of trying to hold over these annuals in a warm greenhouse and a warm seed starting room it I mean it just wasn't smart on my part <laughs> so anyway the worst chemical I used today it was bleach so I feel pretty good about that I'm not anti-chemical at all just so you guys know but I am anti-chemical before you've tried the other things. So look into the IPM method, the integrated pest management. They even say, hey, if you have no other option, go ahead and use an insecticide or a pesticide or herbicide responsibly and do it the right way. Um, but try everything else first and know what you're doing, know what you could be damaging if you are using any of those stronger things. So, you know, when you really look into it, a bleach solution might be all you need or a strong spray of water might be all you need or increased airflow or not putting something in the greenhouse, right? Any of those things could be all you need and you don't need anything else that might harm the rest of your garden and the, the good bugs natural predators, all that kind of stuff. So anyway, that's it. I hope you all enjoyed this and I hope you all have a chance to get in your garden today.